you know, of course it's more drama on Facebook. I feel like so many <laughs> of our episodes are about Facebook drama between family members, but this time it's my family, my extended family that's yes. going a little bit crazy. Yeah. Mason's family gets a break. Well, and I, I love you say it's, you know, it's Facebook, it's drama, but I think that a lot of people will probably agree that that is a lot of Facebook. There's drama. It's it's not the personal communication. You can say things on Facebook that you might not say mm-hmm. under more personal circumstances. You often will say stupid things in the heat of the moment and then Absolutely. retract them later on, which is what happened in this situation. And and mostly for us, it's not about picking on what someone said, more about how can we learn from what's been said so that we can become better and manage the situations better. Right. Well, and it's not just Facebook, it's social media in general. Yeah, absolutely. So Very one impersonal. of my, right. One of my seminary students many, many years ago, um, talked about social media being an absolute train wreck. And it can be, it can be a very useful tool and it definitely can be a place of drama and heated conversations and definitely a place where people like to air their dirty laundry. And that's a normal, natural thing. And, um, one of the reasons why we really haven't talked about my family's drama on Facebook before is because my parents aren't on Facebook. They hate it. So they're not on it. Um, they're I don't, also not communicating with right, you, so I that don't piece think is gone. My brother's not on it very much. And then um, child number three, my younger sister, so not the youngest, but the next one, also isn't on Facebook very much. So when it comes to my family, meaning my parents and my siblings, I'm on it and my youngest sister is on it and the rest of my family isn't. Yeah. Um, my parents also have always been incredibly concerned about how they are viewed by the public. And so social media, they're not going to be, um, they're not going to be airing our family's dirty laundry on Facebook in the same way that like your siblings have been, because I think Most of your siblings, if not all of them, are active, Mason, on Facebook. But my family just really isn't super active. Except my parents, yeah. On on Facebook. So, um, so yeah, so that's one of the reasons why. Because I guarantee I have some serious family drama. (laughs) Um, It's just not as public, Mason, as your family drama has been. However, And and a lot of it's not related to church stuff, so it hasn't come up on this thing, yeah. Right. However, that doesn't mean that my family is above social media drama. It's just (laughs) not my immediate family because they don't have a presence on social media. Right. And so recently, I don't even remember what the initial post was. It was one of our recent um, posts that shared uh, what was going on in our podcasting world here. So it was, you know, for those of you that are on our Facebook pages, so we've got the Unpacking Mormonism and Other Religious Trauma um, page. We have the Unpacking Mormon, Mormonism and Other Religious Trauma. Goodness gracious, it's such a mouthful. Um, <laughs> private group. And then I have a business Facebook pri- profile, which is Sarah Westbrook. And then we just added my author page, which, hey, plug in. We have an official release Woo-hoo! date. As long as there are no unexpected delays, my book is set to release on September 6th. Really excited about that date because I feel like the September 6th, the fear in the world of Mormonism, the September 6th was the excommunication of six individuals who I feel were advocating for truth. Um, and improvement within Mormonism and they got excommunicated for it. And so I just absolutely love that my book is going to be released on that day. And for me, that's a, my way of honoring way to advocate. I'd like to continue to advocate. And while that book is not, um, specific to the Mormon experience, there's definitely Mormon undertones because I was raised Mormon. And so I'm really excited about that launch date. But so my book will be out for purchase September 6th, unless you hear from me. Otherwise, if you would like to be on the email list, 
four book announcements so that you get the most up-to-date information about what's going on, not only with my publications, but also with the other Daisy Girl stuff, please head over to our website, daisygirlcommunications.com um, and hit the contact us and it'll have you give you some options where you can sign up for the newsletter and the announcements. And uh, we've got a blog that's getting ready to come live that gives you little tips. And there's so there's a lot going on over there. But anyway, back to my story. Um, my aunt asked me on Facebook, um, you know, when are you going to stop tearing down the Mormon church and what are you doing to bring people to Christ? Now I know my, my family very well. Um, it is not uncommon for my family to use kind of this passive aggressive questioning style to shut somebody up. And that's very much what my aunt's post felt like. Now I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt and say she's genuinely curious. So I answered her question. At least I felt like I answered her question and she later came back and said no. And some of our you know, listeners and whatnot got involved in that conversation and talked about the toxicity of it and, and whatnot. And then for those who were, cause that happened on my personal profile. Right. So I, I, you know, darkened out aunt's name and posted it in our unpacking Mormonism group and said, Hey, how are you doing out there to our listeners in the sense of when passive aggressive hits you like this, how can you respond in healthy ways. Right. And I felt like on that platform, we had a really good conversation, but my cousin, um, messaged me and then he has gone on to delete it. So unfortunately you cannot see, um, a lot of this conversation, but I told Mason, I said, Mason, that cousin, um, I'll call him Jojo for today. Okay. Because that is not anywhere near his name, but I'm gonna call him Jojo for today. Um, but he, he messaged me and it was really aggressive and it was, it was very accusatory. And unfortunately, a lot of what he said was true. And so, um, one of the things that he said, I wanted to share this and I'm looking at these pictures, Mason, that you sent me. Oh, there it is. Okay. I found, I found this second, uh, the second piece that I need for this. Um, but so Jojo is gay. And Jojo came out of the closet to me when we were teenagers. And he's always been one of my favorite cousins. We've always been close. We're close in age. We hung out a lot. Um, My dad was always cruel to him. And and so I'm going to read what Jojo said here. Um, He said something along the lines of, I love that you say that, you know, and so this is his mom's response is passive aggressive. And then he says he's been wondering the same thing. But then he goes into this really accusatory thing, which I had no idea that he felt this way. Um, and, and I had forgotten about a lot of these things. Like it's not because for me, I felt like I was justified and doing the quote unquote right thing because I'm not the one who was traumatized by my actions. I didn't remember it. It's like that meme that I've seen again on social media that says, you know, well, of course you don't remember what you did to you. It was just another Thursday. To me, it changed my entire outlook on life. And there's a great deal of truth to that. Oftentimes the perpetrator of the trauma is not going to remember it or if they, uh, what they've done, or if they do remember it, they're going to have a very different version than the person who's traumatized. So that's very normal. Is your vehicle stopping like it should? Does it squeal or grind when you brake? Don't miss out on summer brake deals at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Chicken tacos should only be trusted to chicken professionals. That's where we come in. Introducing Zaxby's new chicken finger tacos. One comes with pico de gallo and creamy chipotle ranch. And the other comes with bacon, lettuce, tomato, and avocado ranch. Chicken experts since 1990. Chicken taco experts since now. Order yours today in the Zax Rewards app. Woo saucy! Zaxby's. 
Shop Plato's Closet tax-free August 2nd through 4th for back-to-school styles. We sell the trendy, gently used styles you need to make a difference in the world and in your wallet for back-to-school shopping. Save up to 70% off regular retail prices by choosing recycled styles. Save even more when you shop tax-free this weekend. Make a change that others can respect and repeat. Shop Plato's Closet in North Charleston and West Ashley this year for your back-to-school looks. Plato's Closet, located in West Ashley on Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and North Charleston on Rivers Avenue.